Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk about the price of Bitcoin, why the price is entirely what matters. Oftentimes you'll hear people say, oh, I'm in it for the technology, I, we shouldn't pay attention to the price, that doesn't matter. No, the price is entirely why we're all here. It's exactly why Bitcoin has succeeded, and it largely informs what gets built and the overall success of Bitcoin. And so I'm going to go ahead and switch over to um, the article that I wrote. So this Price of Bitcoin article comes out Thursdays to paid subscribers, which I'll include a link that you should see uh, on the screen right now. And uh, so it comes here first Thursday for paid subs. And then on Saturday, Sunday, I go ahead and publish it via TweetStorm and this YouTube video. All right, so let's go ahead and dig in. Have you, and, you know, for, for folks here, probably you've probably heard of a marketing viral loop. So what a marketing viral loop is, is it's something where let's say you go refer someone to take an Uber. So you send them that code that says, hey, if you take an Uber, I get $5 off, you get $5 off, and then they join Uber. And then if they join, they can share that with a friend as well. That creates a viral loop. It's, the reason why it's called viral is it's like a viral infection. Uh, it's get, it gets passed on through multiple individuals and increases a propagation rate. Uh, in this case, the propagation rate of Bitcoin ownership and belief in Bitcoin or Bitcoin adoption. So Satoshi actually built this into Bitcoin, which is really fascinating. Most of us have heard about Bitcoin during 2013, 2017, uh, when our friends and family were talking about the price increase, or very recently, many of you listening to this might've heard about it in 2021. It's through this viral loop, uh, folks buying into it. And, and that vi and so, so folks buying into it, um, them talking about it, their friends hearing about it, and then the friends buying it. It's through this viral loop in which Bitcoin succeeds. So, you know, this price is a signal to folks that Bitcoin is interesting, solves a problem for them, and that others are recognizing it as new money. If Bitcoin's price stayed at $100, none of us would be talking about it. And while there's volatility, Bitcoin keeps making higher lows. So Satoshi, what was really fascinating about this is that Satoshi actually thought about this a long time ago, where he um, figured this out before Bitcoin had any value. Satoshi says, as the number of users grows, the value per coin increases. It has the potential for a positive feedback loop. As users increase, the price, the value goes up, which could attract more users to take advantage of the increasing value. Satoshi is describing a, a, a FOMO system where people see the price going up, they buy ahead in expectation of it. So it's, it's, he's describing FOMO here. And he wrote this, you know, like I mentioned before, before Bitcoin was worth a penny. So the way that we can kind of see this in practice is through Glass. So this is Glassnode, a really cool website that has a bunch of different analytics. And we can see the price of Bitcoin in gray here. And we can see Bitcoin's inflation schedule. And right here, in these moments, you can see where the halving occurs. So the halving, occur, uh, essentially, the number of newly minted Bitcoins per block drops in half. And what we can see here in these drops is we have a corresponding price run up. And then we have a drop and corresponding price run up. And we have a drop in corresponding price run up, which is a really fascinating uh, system. So it's hypothesized that these cycles and that these halvings induce these cycles. The idea being that a reduction in supply with an increase in demand essentially makes number go up. And what's really unique about Bitcoin versus gold or another commodity is that there is no supply response in an increase in demand. And what that means is that as Bitcoin is more and more in demand, you can't create more of it. It's on a very, it's on a fixed schedule of creation and there's only 21 million total. With gold or oil, you can dig deeper and deeper into the earth and if demand for gold or oil went high enough or demand for gold went high enough, you could even mine it in asteroids. So that's called a supply response. The supply, the signal from uh, the high demand, which is the price, so demand pushes up the uh, valuation of the commodity and now that commodity is worth more the suppliers go, oh, this is a signal that more people want it and we'll dig deeper and deeper down into the earth and spend more money to go get it. Uh, but Bitcoin doesn't have that, which leads to these really intense price run-ups. Price also brings about user adoption. For Bitcoin as a store of value asset, buying and hodling is adoption. And as we can see here in the chart below with Coinbase users over time, 2017 and late 2020 have had enormous increases in users as Bitcoin's price started to climb. As we can see here and and down here um, with Kraken as well, the company I work at, you'd see the same sort of thing, but we just don't, we don't publish these numbers. And with fundraising, the price is a huge aspect of this too. With the price increase, more fundraising is thrown at the space, which ensures that there are more exchanges, wallets, data providers, 
uh, hardware wallets, uh, metal backups, all sorts of things for Bitcoiners to be able to utilize and interact with the Bitcoin protocol. Companies are built around that. And uh, I didn't find any 2020 metrics, but 2020, uh, 2018 metrics, you know, really highlight how crazy this gets during these bull runs where, you know, you've got like 4x the amount of funding from the year before. So these, these, the price is an enormous impact, you know, so far we've touched on uh, user adoption and VC investment and then liquidity. So liquidity is the ability to buy or sell into something without having too much slippage. For example, being able to enter and exit a position without losing or spending too much money. So for like, if I wanted to buy a share of Apple, um, by the time I finish buying or not one share, but I want to buy a billion dollars worth of Apple. By the time I finish buying, I haven't moved the price 50%. Um, I've only maybe moved it like, you know, five bips. Same with selling as well. So with Bitcoin, as these market cycles play out, it's liquidity or it's volume and depth of order book. gets deeper and deeper and allows for more and more people to participate, which is a sort of a flywheel effect. And Bitcoin actually just hit a trillion dollar market cap, which for some investment come for, for some, uh, com, uh, for some, for some like an investment firms and for some sovereign wealth funds, that is the minimum size of an asset that they can invest in. So uh, right here, you can look and see the liquidity over time since 2012. And you can see that the, the, this is in dollars, by the way, as you can see, um, <laughs> as you can see down here, and this is Bitcoin's price in blue and on the right axis. Um, as you can see, the volume is massively higher than the periods before. This is aggregate, aggregate exchange volume. And then Bitcoin core development is also key uh, with these price run-ups. So the price as it runs up, more and more great developers come into the space and want to work on Bitcoin. And when we look at, oh, by the way, here's Bitcoinity, where that, where that data is from, uh, with the with the uh, liquidity, and with uh, on GitHub, you can look at Bitcoin's uh, Bitcoin Core, which is Bitcoin's uh, software. You can look at the contributors to Bitcoin's core development. So you can look at who's contributed over time, and you can see over time commits are rising. There's a lot more unique developers who are coming into this space. And there's a really cool thing that's been that's been happening where uh, developers are being funded by different companies. And this was written almost a year ago, so it's a little outdated. But here's some of the companies and how many developers that they fund, which I think is really awesome. It's sort of a patronage system. And I think this is only going to get stronger over time. It definitely has over the last year. And once Bitcoin keep, keeps growing larger and larger, I think there's going to be more and more of this. Uh, also, there's a website called Bitcoin Donation Portal, which is awesome. Um, here you can go donate directly to different developers. So you can donate directly to these individuals. They've got their Bitcoin wallets connected. Or they, sorry, I mean, for a better terminology for that would be they have their Bitcoin addresses here to where you can you can send them some Bitcoin. Um, but yeah, this is a really cool spot where you can donate to different folks in this space. And then Bitcoin security model. So Bitcoin is secured by the block reward. The block reward incentivizes miners to behave properly, uh, which prevents a 51% attack or a reorganization of transactions and the appropriate ordering. And in the, the, the block reward is comprised of the newly minted Bitcoins called the subsidy and transaction fees. Now the subsidy decreases over time, as we saw before with Bitcoin's issuance dropping that needs to be replaced by transaction fees. And so with transaction fees, uh, we need to see that this is happening over the long term. And then what that means is that the transaction fees need to represent aggregate, uh, you know, aggregate folks moving and storing their Bitcoin. Um, and so uh, the what we've seen in 2017 and 2021 is that minor fees or minor revenue as a from transaction fees as a percentage on the left axis here is starting to climb again as we saw in 2017. So we're starting to see higher lows here, which indicates that maybe our next higher low is around the 10 to 20 percent level, and then potentially in the other bull runs it might hit 50 and then eventually 100 percent. This ensures long term that Bitcoin security will be fine, that Bitcoin's a game theoretic security model will be intact. So the price is critical to this. As we see with these price runups, transaction fees as a percentage of the block reward increase over time. And it's because of these speculative cycles. It's because of the price run up. In conclusion, Bitcoin's price is the singular function that enables it to grow in user adoption, liquidity, funding, security, and core development. It is the most important aspect of Bitcoin. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. 
if you like this, uh, hit me, give me a subscribe. Um, apologies if I'm like a little bit quiet today, a little bit under the weather, but hope you enjoyed and cheers.